Is oh. there a squirrel party outside? Oh. There's a squirrel party out there. When I used to show the footage of the garden in New York, people would ask me all the time, how come the deer and rabbits and stuff don't bother the garden? I didn't have an answer. I don't know. They would come in the yard, they would never bother the garden, ever. People are asking me all week long, how come the squirrels don't come to the feeder? Well. I put the cable up here, but a squirrel can tightrope walk on the cable. I put up a little deflector here, which is just some sheet metal, but the squirrels can jump right over that. They just come here and they clean up all the stuff on the ground. And all these squirrels, they're not going into the cabin. They're not even going underneath the cabin. They come here for the clean up the ground. This is perfect. There'll be a mixture of red and grays together. They just feed side by side. They don't bother each other. It's pretty funny. But all the critters and the birds are very entertaining. And I'm gonna keep on feeding them. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm gonna have the seed here. You see the squirrels that they're all gonna get inside. Well. We don't have any mice, any critters at all in the cabin or in the walls or in the roof. The mice keep coming just like the squirrels keep coming. They go underneath and they get, catch them in a bucket trap. The squirrels are cleaning up what was spilled on the ground from the birds. So it's all good. The squirrels don't bother the feeders. They don't bother the camp. It's just the mice, you know. Yes, I have a lot of mice right now because of the feeders, but the mice will just keep on coming. I could totally eradicate them, and they're just going to keep on coming. Same with all these squirrels, if I wanted to. I could get rid of them all, and they're just going to keep coming. You have a cabin in the woods, you're going to have critters. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> yeah. But there's no problem, okay? Even if we didn't feed the birds, you're going to have mice. You're going to have mice move in. They move in my vehicles, as I've already showed you. The other day, I went to start my quad. Battery was dead. I pulled the battery out. There's a mouse nest under the seat, right in there with all my wiring. Open the cover on the snowmobile. Mouse nest under there. Any place they can seek shelter, they're going to do it. So regardless if I'm feeding the birds or not, the critters are going to want to get in underneath the cabin. That's what the bucket's for. And we're on to them now. <laughs> Ever since I started doing the weekly Q&As with the fry pans behind me, lots of people have taken an interest in my ironware. And I've been asked several times if I would show my cast iron collection. Since I was just asked that again last week, I'm going to go ahead and do a little show and tell of my cast iron. Now, I don't consider myself a collector by any means. I just like the stuff. And some of these have been with me my entire life. So I'll do a little show and tell. Let's start off with the Dutch ovens that I have. This one is intended for outdoor use. When you bury it in coals, it has this lip that keeps all the coals on top of the lid. So when you check on your food, you're not spilling ashes into your food. Obviously, this one is not designed for that. This one is better to be used on a stove or on top of a fire cooking like a soup or a stew. If you're going to use them outside on a campfire, you want to make sure that you buy the camping Dutch oven. That has the lip here so you can put hot coals on the lid and it has the legs so this can stand right in the coals. Now this one here, this old Griswold 
tight top baster. This has been in my family longer than I have been in my family. When I was living in my first cabin, somewhere when I was around maybe 25 years old, my parents gave it to me. What a gift. This is an absolute treasure. This has cooked a lot of fine meals on the wood stove. This old Griswold, this has been up here in this camp longer than I have. This thing, I don't know the age on it. It's a good old Griswold. It has this basket. I can't tell you how much fish that we have deep fried in this thing over the years. Just looking at this pot brings back fond memories. As a little boy, we'd go down to the lake, catch some bullheads up here. They call them horn pout. My mother would batter them up and we'd deep fry them in this. What a little gem this is. I'm not sure of the value of this pot, but I'm sure they don't come cheap. This is a treasure. This is one of my newest acquisitions. It's a Wagner breakfast skillet, the divided skillet. This was restored and sent up to me as a gift by one of my subscribers. Yeah. We use this quite often. It's a nice pan. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know all about my obsession with these waffle irons. This is a 1925 Montgomery Wards waffle iron that I picked up on eBay. I brought it back to Bear Iron and restored it. This is my favorite one that I've been using and showing in my videos for a few years now. This is the griddle that I was showing you a few months ago. I was restoring it out on the gas grill. This was a griddle that I picked up oh, at a junk shop, I guess. It was just a few dollars. It was all rusty. I put it through the vinegar bath, got all the rust off of it, did the restoration out on the gas grill. It's turned into just a fabulous piece of cookware. Nothing sticks to it. Great performer. This was a nice find. A few years ago, I saw an ad in the paper that said indoor yard sales, and there was a phone number. So I called it, I asked them if they had any cast iron pans. Well, it took them a minute to think, and they go, oh, I think we have some in the back of the cabinet we don't use. So they dug them out. They said, yeah, we got three pans here. So I said, just put them aside, I'll be right down. Not knowing what to expect. Total crap shoot, right? So I go down there. They have this old Wagner chicken fryer. Now this thing has been used because the name Wagner Ware is worn right off. Okay? <laughs> Beautiful shape. It was well cared for. Then there was a little Griswold. Little Griswold pan here. Beautiful shape. And there was another pan, I can't say if it was this one or one just like it, because I have several like this. So they showed me these three pans, I asked them what they wanted for it, they said 10 bucks. I gave them the 10 bucks and I left the building. This little Griswold here is worth all of that and more. So that was a good bargain. So sometimes if you're stopping at a yard sale and you don't see any cast iron, and you're looking for it, just ask them. A lot of people have this stuff tucked away and they don't use it. That's probably the best way to get your best price on some iron wire. Out of my entire collection, these three pans mean the most to me. This pan in particular has been up in this camp my entire life. And I showed you a photo a while back where I was frying up some fish that I caught in this out on a little camp stove out in the cabin yard here. I was probably 10 years old. <laughs> now these pans here, this one is a, from Birmingham Stove and Range. This brand of iron is one of my favorites. You can tell it's a BSR pan because it has this heat ring around the bottom edge. This one looks similar, but the heat ring has these notches. 
at 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. It has these notches. This one here is an old lodge as well. They might not be worth as much as some of my other items, but they hold the most sentimental value, and it's probably because they've been feeding me my entire life. That's what I love about cast iron. If they're treated well, they're going to last forever, and they can be passed down from generation after generation. Some of these items here, like that old Griswold there, my grandparents cooked on that. And I never even got to meet them. They had left the earth long before I was even born. But yet, I'm still cooking my food in the same ironware. To some people, that means nothing. But to others that are nostalgic like myself, it's, a, I don't know, there's something really cool about it. So that's what we have here at the New Hampshire camp. The New York cabin, we just have a small collection of kind of junky pans that we found at yard sales. Stuff that was badly pitted or warped. But it serves the purpose up there because it's mostly used out on the campfire or on the rocket stove. Places that I don't like to use my good ironware. Now this little fish fryer, you're going to see this come back into the game here real soon because we're getting some good ice on the ponds. We're getting the ice fishing gear together. We're going to be out there catching some fish and back here cooking them up. Stay tuned for that. Fish. Uh, come on. Feel some resistance, come huh? Come on. Oh. Come on. Come. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, nice bass. Yeah. Alrighty, time for questions of the week. I've got quite a list here. I don't know if I'll get through them all. Before I get started, I want to mention. I promised you a mouse video. I know that 99.9% .9 of my viewers are looking forward to another mouse video. Um, if you didn't see it already, then you will see it following this video. I was going to put the mouse footage in this segment, but I'm going to do it separately. So depends on how this is all going to unfold because this is uh, Wednesday today when I'm filming this. So if I can get the mouse video done, I will probably launch that first and then launch this afterwards. But if you haven't seen the mouse footage yet, you will see it following this video, whether it's later today or coming up in a day or two. Because it's quite involved doing those voiceovers and clipping all that footage and lining everything up. I'm not just putting voiceovers, random footage. I'm lining everything up to try and make it comical. And it is. Like I said, 99.9% .9 of you enjoy it. Okay. Let's go. Ah, that one's chipped right off here. Have I ever done any leather work? No, I haven't. i um, always been a little intrigued with it. But um, I have friends that do leather work, especially my Best buddy Joe does fabulous leather work, so if I ever need something done, I just assume hire him to do it. What is my favorite coffee? I don't really have a favorite coffee, um, just as long as it's whole bean coffee, because we grind it just before we brew it. Actually, market basket stores have some pretty good coffee. You buy the store brand, very affordable. Uh, great stuff. That's what we buy. But folks send us coffee beans from all over the world. So that's kind of cool. All right. <laughs> In the last video, I showed you those two little stuffed toys we brought home from the dump. And I said that we, we bring these home for the kids because the kids like to play with them. <laughs> so I had a lot, of, a lot of people writing in and go, oh, I didn't know you guys had children up there. <laughs> the kids are the dogs. <laughs> I'm 56. My children days are over. I did get a good kick out of that, so thank you for the laughs. <laughs> now, we bring little stuffed toys home from the dump. And anytime you, if you have a Border Collie, they're probably very 
toy conscious like ours. And if you bring home a new toy, they are bonkers over it. Just like any kid, it's the new toy. That's what they want to play with. We bring home little stuffed toys from the dump. We let them play with it. But until we st start seeing them chewing on them and trying to take the eyes off or the stuffing out of it, and then we chuck it. But they love it. It makes them happy for a little while, and then we chuck the toy. And that's what we love about the dump. We just get stuff that we all enjoy. And speaking of that, um, that heater that we picked up, uh, I brought it here, and I was going to fiddle with it, and then... I just decided I really didn't need it, you know. Um, that was an impulse buy. <laughs> I saw that heater, I couldn't pass it up. I had to put it in the truck. So, but like I said, I brought it home and then it was like, you know, I really don't need this thing. So we brought it back and hopefully someone that needs it scoffed it up. Yeah, <laughs> just impulse buy, what can I say? How come I don't just get a weather radio? Well, really, to put it bluntly, um, I'm just not really that concerned about the weather. It's going to do whatever it's going to do, whether I know it's coming or not. Yeah. Uh, we don't even have a radio here. Okay? The only radio we own is uh, in the dashboard of the vehicle. <laughs> and that don't work because the mice chewed the wire to it. So. <laughs> um, if I ever see a weather radio at the dump, then I'll, I'll have a weather radio. <laughs> Alrighty, what else we got here? Oh, quite often people are asking me if I will do a video on chainsaw sharpening. Well, probably not. I might include a little bit of it in a video in the future, but I don't do anything any different than anybody else. I push that file across those cutters just the same as anybody else. So I got nothing special going on there. Uh, because we burn wood, people have asked, if, what safety precautions do we take? Okay, well, if you ever pass by the cabin in the wintertime, you'll see a ladder leaning against the roof right by the chimney. Uh, I always have a ladder leaning against the roof in the wintertime, so if I have a chimney fire and I'm in a panic, I don't have to go and dig my ladder out of the snow and mess around. Okay, the ladder is there. I can just climb up and dump some baking soda down the chimney. So one of the safety precautions that we do take, aside from that, is, I showed this in a video in the past. These are wide mouth mayonnaise containers. It's full of baking soda. Baking soda is a fantastic fire extinguisher. Now, Everyone should have a fire extinguisher in their home, which we do. And there's one in the corner over there. But like I said in a previous video, if you have a fire raging out of control, you are going to be in a panic situation. And if you're in a panic situation, it's very hard to keep your wits about you. Okay? You get that thing and you're trying to fumble with it. And if you've never used it before, I'll tell you, it's a task. It sounds pretty stupid really because it's very simple to operate one but when you're in a panic it's a whole nother story this has a wide mouth on it I don't care how panicked you are you can reach your hand in and throw handfuls of baking soda and it will extinguish your fire it's very cheap very effective we have a jug right here we have a jug upstairs and a jug in the bedroom that way it's not just over here near the stove. You wake up in the night and you've got a fire going on. I want to have one nearby. So there's one in the corner of the bedroom. Yeah. If you're burning wood, or if, for any reason, having some of that in the house is a good idea. So those are the safety precautions that we take. All right, one more quick one and I'm going to wrap it up. What is the most unique thing I've ever found at the dump or at a yard sale? Um, I couldn't think of anything. The only thing that really came to mind as far as being unique, and it's because I was just talking about this the other day, is this book. All right, this book is The Old Man and the Boy, an old tattered book. And I found it at a yard sale during the mid-80s, I think it was. And 
it was a good book, a nice story, and I've kept it. And one of my subscribers who have left quite a few nice comments on my videos, um, I saw the name Peter Stanhope, and it was like, God, that sounds familiar. And we chatted back and forth, and he said that he had lived in New Hampshire right about the time that I was living in my old cabin, and that is when I bought this book at a yard sale. And I go, I, I'm trying to think of where I heard that name before, and then I realized it was inside this book, okay? It says Peter S. Stanhope, 1976. See that? <laughs> so Peter, if this is your book, which I think it is, because I bought it at a yard sale in the area that you were living in <laughs> at that time. So if this is your book, let me know, because I've always enjoyed the comments that you leave me, and one of these days we're going to hook up, because you say you're going to come back to New Hampshire. So <laughs> I'll give you your book back. <laughs> and if it's not your book, then it's just a freak coincidence. So I'm going to wrap it up. That's it for now. Keep your questions coming. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All the best to you, and God bless. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss